Hello guys, just a quick video for you today. I don't usually do inbox reviews, but I thought I'd have a quick look at this Canadian model water truck in 135th scale from Mirror Models. Now I was in my local model shop the other day looking for some paint for the Dora. It turns out four tins are not enough. Now unfortunately they didn't have any paint, but I did notice this nice little kit from Mirror Models, and I'd never heard of that company before. So I thought I would check them out. So this is the CMP, the Canadian Military Pattern F-15A water truck. But Mirror Models also do a range of these vehicles, so let's have a quick look at what they offer. This is their website. They're an Irish company, and they have quite a few distributors around the world. There's quite a few countries here, including where I used to live in Malaysia. I've actually been in World Hobby Miniatures in Penang quite a few times, and I've never seen these kits. Um, so maybe I've just not noticed them. But there's quite a few countries here, so it's quite likely you can find mirror model kits um, wherever you are. So looking at their product range, we can see that they've got a lot of uh, trucks and service vehicles and this kind of thing. Lots of variations of this uh, CMP pattern. British Morris there, we've got the Mark III, number 5, and the Mark III late, uh, Mark II early. Lots of cool little versions there. I'd really like to get my hands on some of these in the future, I think. A few bulldozers down here, which again are not particularly common kits. Now this product page doesn't seem to be very up to date because the, this kit that I'm building now isn't on it. But if we click on the top left, we can see different versions of this water truck. And these are the two versions which are in my local hobby shop. I really like the box art here on this, uh, this greenish European version. And then we've got the desert version down here, which I actually bought. The difference between them, I think, is merely the slightly different cab style. And as we'll see in a minute, this kit can be painted in green or in uh, desert markings. Before we look in the box, let's look at some reference photos of the CMP in its various guises. So let's have a quick look around the box before we look inside. On the side we've got this photo of the built kit and a small amount of text which is very reassuring because this is suitable for average modelers. Excellent, that's me. 350 plus parts and some PE detail sheets. Accurate interior and engine. On the other side of the box we have a bit of a history of the CMP truck with that little note at the end that the uh, cab was often removed in desert service. So let's look inside. This box is pretty full. It is one of those ones where the instructions are bigger than the box so they've been folded over. I'm not a big fan of that. I feel like they could just fold the sheet in half rather than having it curved like that, but never mind. All the sprues are in individual bags, so let me take them out and get back to you in a minute. So let's take a look at what's inside. This is our first sprue, and it clearly contains the water tank here, which looks a lot smaller than I imagined it to be. And uh, a few other accessories here. We've got some doors there on the back, and a few panels for the rear of the truck by the looks of it. Let's zoom into that. And you can see there's some nice crisp detail on these uh, retaining straps here, as well as the bolt heads on the top there. I do notice that there is a raised area in the middle of this tank and on the side closest to us right now that's quite a smooth transition whereas on the other side it's quite a sharp step. I'm not sure which of those is correct or if it's supposed to be asymmetrical. Even if it is supposed to be symmetrical it's only a minor thing but it did, uh, it did uh, stand out when I looked at it. And then the detail on the doors here looks very nice with this uh, padlock. You don't normally see that level of detail in 135th scale. And the same thing across here on these uh, various um, stowage uh, hatches and so on. They've all got that same detail 
with the padlocks. That's really nice, that'll paint up very well. The next sprue is various parts of the bonnet, or the hood, and what look like a few parts of the interior. Here's that bonnet in more detail. Some nice bolt detail there. I can imagine this painting up really nicely in the, uh, the dirt and the grime and the sand and the dust gathering nicely around those bolt heads and around that detail. The next sprue contains the mud guards, what looks like the floor of the cabin and definitely the roof of the cabin. There are a few interior parts here by the looks of it too. There are some quite big sprue gates here. The instructions actually mention that, but they do seem to be in some sensible places rather than half overlapping the exposed edges like you find in some kits. The only ejector pin marks I saw in the whole kit were here. I feel like these are interior pieces. I'm not sure whether or not those two ejector pin marks will be visible when the kit is built or if they'll need sanding down. The kit promises a fully detailed engine and those parts are on the next sprue. I'm not sure how accessible the engine will be once the kit is built. It will be a shame to hide it because it does look quite decent. A couple more sprues here with some finer components. And looking closer at those wheel hubs. Again that all looks very nice and sharp and crisp and I think I'm going to have a good time painting and detailing that. The radiator looks good and I do believe there's a photo etched grill to go over the front. And finally some images of the remaining sprues. We do have clear parts too, of course, for the cab windows and for the headlights. These look really clear. There's a slightly strange um, attachment point on this side window here. I'm not sure how easy that will be to cut off, but uh, we will see. Supplied tyres are rubber and they have the manufacturer markings on the side there. So Dunlop and a couple of digits. There is a seam down the centre, of course, you can't really get away from that. But hopefully this is quite a hard rubber, hopefully that will uh, sand away or cut away quite easily. Then we have a couple of frets of photo etch. So there's that radiator grill. We've also got a fan there and a few other unidentified pieces. And the second fret there as well, sorry about the light. I'm not sure what any of these are at this stage. The decal sheet includes the Allied stars as you'd expect. But it also includes some German crosses and the Africa Corps markings. Presumably this is to make a captured version. The captured version isn't in the uh, instructions, but there's nothing to stop you making one anyway. Talking of the instructions, let's look at the painting guide. This is in Canadian service. This would be in SCC 15, which is the, uh, the green colour. In addition to that Canadian version, we have a British version, which is in desert camo. That's calling out sand there. But I believe probably that should be something like uh, Portland stone or light stone with um, various uh, secondary camouflage colours depending on when it was used. On the reverse we have another Canadian version, very similar to the first, plus a bit of a surprise, a Italian version. So no national markings on that version, just a, uh, a licence plate number. Again, I'm not sure if that sand colour is accurate for the Italian version, or if there's a particular shade of yellow that the Italians used for the desert vehicles. Finally, let's look at the instruction booklet themselves. It's this A4 printed sheet. Opening it up here, we have a little bit of information both about the truck and about the kit. We start with several different sub-assemblies. Looks like a few storage boxes there, some engine parts, some suspension parts. Moving on to building the engine up. Then we move on to building the water tank itself. The access doors at the back. Building that rear platform of the truck. So even the mud guards here go onto the, uh, onto the tank before it goes onto the chassis. Building up the front of the truck. And then the interior. And it says here that we can have the open truck version, so don't use those certain parts there, C1, etc., if we want the open truck version. Then over the page, we start to build up the suspension and the chassis. 
and then it looks like everything gets brought together. There's quite a few steps here, we're only halfway through this booklet. I'm not sure what's going on here, the colouring has changed. I, I think this might be for a different kit. It says at the top there, cab 13 for 35167. So I think that might be for a different version of the kit. I need to read that more carefully before I build this. It might be they've just got one set of instructions for all the variations. And so there you go, quite a long and detailed instruction set. Hopefully the model will be as detailed. And so that concludes this look at the Canadian military pattern F-15 water truck from Mirror Models. I hope you enjoyed this quick preview. This kit is fairly high up on my list of kits I want to build. Of course I would like to have it with a, uh, another vehicle. Obviously it's bringing water supplies or something to some troops. Um, what have I got that would go with it? So I've got the um, Dorchester uh, command vehicle, which again I want to build. I've wanted to build that for a while. That's from AFV Club. I've also got the IBG truck, which can be done in both desert or European theatre camo schemes. So maybe that could lend itself to being uh, in the desert. And I've got Tamiya's um, Valentine tank, which again, of course, is a classic desert tank. So quite a few for me to choose from there, so watch this space to find out what I'll go with. And the people who are likely to find out that answer before anybody else are my Patreon supporters. On my Patreon page I do post a lot of preview images or suggestions or ideas of upcoming kits and so on, um, sometimes quite a few months before I actually get them built and get a video onto the channel. So if you'd like to see some work in progress photos and some behind the scenes images, as well as take part in some behind the scenes conversation, then you can find the link to the Patreon page on the screen now and in the description below. All that's left is for me to say thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, have fun modeling.